Well, hey there, everybody. This is a tutorial for how to design your own design files for an arabesque tile ornament in Design Space. I have an entire tutorial on my blog and my YouTube channel that shows you how to um, use printable vinyl as well as heat transfer vinyl to decorate a tile ornament. But I also wanted to show folks how to design their own designs. I have over uh, a dozen designs for free on my blog. So if you don't feel like designing, then go check that out via the link below in the video description. But in this video, I am going to show you um, two ways that I would create designs in Design Space in order to decorate my tile arabesque ornaments. We're going to be showing you a print thin cut here, which kind of matches my tutorial when I show you how to do printable vinyl on an ornament. And then I'm also just going to show you simple text phrase and how I would make sure that that's formatted properly for a tile ornament as well. So let's go ahead and start with the text here. I'm going to move these aside so you can kind of see where we're going um, and follow along. So if you're making an ornament using adhesive or heat transfer vinyl, you're going to, of course, want to type out your text here in Design Space, and it can be anything, um, but you're going to need something to help you format it to the design of the template here. We don't want to have words just coming up to the edge or running off the edge because we need something to give us a guide. So I highly recommend downloading my free um, arabesque tile silhouette. that would be a great guide for you. You can go to abkirstencollections.com and I will provide you with these for free if you join our community. Um, this is the a preview of what that looks like here. If you're not familiar with my community, you can just go to my blog, abkirstencollections.com, and in the top menu bar, you will see Freebie Vault. And this is what you'll want to go to in order to access the silhouette I'm talking about. If you're unfamiliar with how to get to my Freebie Vault, this post will explain it all for you and I'm going to link that below in the video. So that's where you can go and find that free file. And that's what I'm going to be using here. So I'm going to go to my upload button. I've already uploaded my file here a couple times as you can see. If you need to upload the file, you'll simply select the upload image here. You'll browse your computer and then you will bring the image in from wherever you have decided to store it on your computer. Okay, so that's exactly how you bring a file in. But I'm just going to bring in the one I already did. I'm going to highlight it and click insert image. Now here is where you want to think about the size of your ornament. So my tiles were about 3.6 inches at their widest point I believe and I'm gonna go just a little below that at 3.4 because I don't want it going all the way to the edge. I want there to be a little bit of like border around where you know text isn't going edge to edge. That would look a little bit weird. So I went just a tiny bit under the width of my ornament um, or my tile. Measure your tile and see what yours is. I got mine from Lowe's so if you get yours from Lowe's too you may end up with the exact same measurements here. Let me change this to white really quickly. And then you'll want to grab your text tool over here, and you can use Cricut fonts or download your own fonts. I have resources on how to download and install your own fonts. If you're interested, you can visit that below in the video description as well. I'm going to type out just the simple Merry Christmas phrase here. It's going to default to my last used font here, and I'm going to go ahead and use that advanced tool and I'm going to ungroup by lines so that I can move my Mary freely from my Christmas and I'm going to change the font for Christmas here because I want that to be a different font so I'm going to change this to I have a Yorkshire font I like to use which is different than the one over here. The one over here is called Scooth's Lane um, with a C, uh, S-C-O-O-T-H, and then the word Lane. So if you're interested in that font, then you can search that online too. Okay, so your font might need a little bit of editing here. So I'm going to bring the letter spacing in here by using the tool right up here that says letter space. I'm going to decrease the space between the letters so it's connected more like um, you know a natural script would be. However, you can see the C here is sort of running in to the H, so I'm actually going to ungroup my letters and move that out just a little bit here to make it look more natural. Same thing with the T here, it's kind of running into the S a little too much. And just like I did in my last one, I think I'm going to move the must down here. It's like that. 
that aside for just a minute. All right, so this would be one example here of getting my letters um, sort of perfected is just, you know, eliminating some of that space there that we don't want. And now I'm going to use the, the ornament silhouette here as a guide for my final arrangement of my text. So I'm going to shrink this down. And I'm going to reduce the space a little bit between these letters as well, just a tiny bit. There we go. So this shows me here, you know, you can clearly see, all right, things are fitting properly inside of this silhouette. And we know that it's going to work size wise and design wise when we go to put this onto um, our ornament. But I'm going to move this aside for just a minute because with this one down here, you want to make sure that you weld this because if you don't, it's actually still going to put cut lines between each of these letters and it's not going to be a seamless piece. So I'm going to use my weld tool just like that. This is a print, so you don't need to use the weld tool. I'm just going to attach it so that the letters don't get scrambled when I go to the cut screen. And I'm going to group these two together using my group tool at the top there. So now you don't need to keep this part here if you're just doing a basic vinyl or iron-on onto the tile. You don't need to keep the actual background piece in this case. You would just cut this out in red or green. If you want to do different colors for these, let me ungroup this. You could change these here. So let's see, we want to do a red and we want to do a green. And then you could change those as well. And when you go to the naked screen, the cut screen, it would sort your project by color. So you can see here our Mary and our Christmas right here. So it would sort that by color. You would load your vinyl. If you're doing iron on, make sure you hit that mirror button right down here so that your design um, turns the right side, you know, right side up when you actually are done ironing your material on. Okay, so that is the first step there. If you're just doing basic text designs, grab this free silhouette template here. You can do anything with your font here in Cricut Design Space, and it'll be your guide to getting your perfect proportions with your text. So that's the first step there. Now I'm just gonna pull this aside for a moment. Now the second option is to do a pattern. And if you're doing a pattern, this is gonna be a print and cut process. And the print and cut process is really fun because you can add a lot more color and detail. It's actually faster. You don't have to do any weeding or anything. And I use printable vinyl for this process. I'm gonna link my video tutorial on how I actually assembled these as well. So make sure you check that out if you wanna see the assembly process. So the first step here is going to be to add a pattern. Now anytime we add a pattern, you're going to be changing this up here in the edit bar, select your arabesque tile. You're going to change it to from a no fill to a print. And what that basically means is we're going from using a design that would be cut out on a material such as vinyl or paper, and we're changing it to something that is going to get run through a printer and then cut out by the Cricut machine. So whatever we're doing here when we change the fill to print is going to be a print then cut process. You'll see that reflected here in the edit bar as well as over here in your layers panel to your right hand side. The little swatch here that is white, which represents our color, I'm going to click on that and then there'll be a little drop down menu here that says pattern. When you click on pattern, you'll be presented with all of Cricut's patterns that they offer for free, as well as any patterns that you have uploaded. So this is the fun part where if you want to go find some seamless digital patterns on Etsy, Creative Market, um, just on Google, freepick.com, um, there's lots of places out there that will do digital patterns. You can add your own pattern. Cricut has some in here. I'll just throw one of Cricut's on here real quick so you can see that see that theirs works really well too. Let's try, what was the other one I just saw? This one sort of looks cool. Let's try that one. You'll select this. It'll take a second, but it's going to fill it to that exact shape. So it looks really cool. Um, and then you could pull this over just like this. And you'll want to change the color. The color is really important at this point because we're doing print then cut. So whatever color for this you see here is what's going to literally print out. So I'm going to under line type right here. 
there's a little question mark because there's two colors selected. So let me do one at a time so you don't get confused. I have the Mary selected there and you can see that our red is represented and I'm going to change that to white and then I'm going to do the same thing with the word Christmas that's in green and change that. And now we can see our words a lot better. And to finalize this process, I would select the entire thing and I would use the flatten tool right here. Because if we were going to go to our cut screen right now, let me show you what would happen. I'm gonna group this and hide it just for a minute. If we were to keep it as is, you would have Cricut do this. It would have your tile as a print and cut. And then over here, it's thinking, oh, you still want this to be cut out on like vinyl or paper or something. We don't want that. We wanna make sure that it is all flattened into one print then cut design. So I'm going to select everything there, use that flatten tool in the bottom of the layers panel. You'll see that reflected right here on the edit bar, or I'm sorry, on the um, layers panel. The edit bar is what's along the top, the layers panel's here to your right hand side. Now when we go to the cut screen, we have that print and cut process exactly as we were wanting. Um, I also want to show you real quick how to upload your own patterns because that's really um, a fun way to get creative if you're buying things like I mentioned off of other websites like Etsy and stuff. So let me go over to the upload button again. Here to your right you'll see pattern fill and you can click on upload pattern. You can browse your computer and then wherever you've downloaded your patterns to you'll want to navigate to that on your desktop. I'm just going to select um, one that I've already uploaded before but we'll just select this one here. And it'll ask you if you want to like give it a label or anything like that. I generally don't ever worry about it, but that's that's totally up to you. You might want to give it like a color palette. That way, if you're searching by color, it'll come back up anytime that you want to find it. I'm going to click save. And you'll see that it says pattern was uploaded successfully, but you will find it under the layers attributes panel in print patterns. What that means is you need to hit the cancel button here. And we need to go back to where we added this pattern. So I'm going to select this arabesque tile again. I'm going to click the little icon right there that's representing our tile. And you'll see our pattern is now uploaded. Your patterns will always be uploaded here at the top. So I'm just going to click on the one I uploaded now. And that's going to replace right there just like that. And my last thing I want to show you about the pattern, just in case this is sort of a crash course, but if you need to edit your pattern for any reason, as far as getting it to shift on you, go back up to that little icon and right here where it says edit pattern, click on that and you'll be able to um, scale it bigger or smaller. So if I want this pattern to be a little bit bigger, I can move this like this upwards and it will reflect in just a moment here. It's, yeah, there it goes. It's a little slow sometimes. So if you want that to be um, bigger than, rather than smaller for the pattern, then you could scale that larger and that's what that would look like. You can also shift the pattern up or down to your left, to your right, and you can rotate it or you could flip it horizontally and vertically. So this doesn't really matter too much when you're dealing with really seamless patterns like this one is. However, if you're doing some other type of pattern that has a different design in it, you might need to know how to edit the pattern. I'm noticing this little like line right here, which I think would look better if it was not visible. So I'm gonna horizontally move this and you see how it's slowly moving on my screen. Yay. Okay. Just like that. So I like that better. So I was able to edit that pattern to my preference. Then you just close this out and you're all ready to go. And that's reflected here on our canvas. And once again, you would want to make sure you've selected everything there with your text and hit that flatten tool. So there you have it. Two ways in order to create designs in Cricut Design Space easily to use um, arabesque tile ornaments, to create arabesque tile ornaments. Um, I'd love to know what you would create. So share that with me below. And if you would like to go download the free silhouette here, here, make sure you visit my blog and that is linked below in the video description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.